We thank the Lord Jesus always and forevermore. Amen. We're going to continue um, our um, journey with the book of Revelation. Uh, today we'll be reading from Revelation chapter 16 and verses 12 to 16 inclusive. So it is Revelation 16 uh, verses 12 to 16 inclusive. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew, Armageddon, and all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. All right, so now we are into the uh, sixth bowl. We said last time, the chapter 16 is actually talking about the great tribulation, which is aimed at our beloved, the Israelite nation, the Jewish people of the 21st century and with them the entire globe everyone will be affected by this great tribulation which is aimed at the jewish people and their return to christ in the end of times which is our century the 21st century the sixth ball we go into it so i don't keep you here for 10 hours which i'm so eager to do but i'm feeling sorry for you guys not so we'll go into it. Verse 12. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates. And its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. The sixth bowl is preparing the way for the second coming of the Messiah. The sixth bowl is preparing the way for the second return of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and God. Are we close? Very. Are we close to see catastrophic things happening at a global level? It can happen any minute, any moment, any time of our times. I'm not scaring you, but I'm just saying that whatever we are thinking of doing, whatever we are planning to do, don't ever do it without Christ in it. Don't seek the world and its pleasures on your own. Don't go and wander in the wilderness of this world on your own because I can assure you, nothing out there is worth your time, your energy being wasted on something that is a vanity of all vanities and the emptiness of all emptiness. Nothing is worth it. So we are very close. And the sixth bowl, where did the angel pour out that sixth bowl? On the great river Euphrates. Now where is this river at present time? Which country is it, is it in? Iraq where I come from. So I'm very familiar with the area to a great degree. So there is the Tigris and the Euphrates, but the river Euphrates is mentioned in the book of Revelation, which is to do with Iraq, this country which is the cradle of all civilizations. Everything began there. Everything began there. The cradle of civilization Iraq and the Middle East. Now, 
some people might take this in the literal sense and say to you that well the river Euphrates has dried up literally and there has been uh, some footages video footages even put on YouTube and other social media platforms showing that the river Euphrates is really drying up you could almost cross it on foot but you see in the book of Revelation we cannot always take things literally because there is a lot of symbolic prophetic sense and discernment here so when you look sp speaking the language of the book of revelation drying up of euphrates is not in the literal sense but in what sense the river euphrates is drying up well when we go back all the way to the roman empire the river Euph euphrates was the borderline of the roman empire that conquered maybe one third of the entire globe and even when we come uh, so the river Euphrates was the borderline between the east and the west it was the interface between east and west the divider the separator between east what is known as east and what is known as west it was the divider the separator the interface of both now, when we come to the Syriac, Aramaic, the Lord's language, which I speak as well, the Lord's language, there is two main dialects in the Syriac, Aramaic language. They are referred to as the Western dialect and the Eastern dialect. Western and Eastern of what? The river Euphrates. The Western dialect of Euphrates is our beloved church of the Syriac Orthodox people. Those who come from Tur Abdin, from Turkey, from Syria, and I have some wonderful people of them here with us present in the church, and I pray there are others watching us through live streaming. Shlam of Shaino, Aydar Buhat. Alam Barikh. Now, when you go to the Western dialect, they use this kind of a pronunciation. Everything is a, with an O, with a H. Maybe it's a bit hard for someone who is an English speaking because there is no letter in the alphabets of the English language uh, pronounced as H. The closest would be H. H or H in the Aussie accent. So there is the O and the H. Give you an example. For bread, in the Western dialect, the Western side of the Euphrates, that dialect for bread, they, ref they call it Lahmo. Lahmo. In the Eastern dialect, now the Eastern dialect is Iraq. The Western dialect is Syria. And you go all the way to Israel, where the Lord Jesus lived in Galilee, Nazareth, they would have spoken more so the Western dialect. So, in the Eastern dialect, it is Lachma. So the H becomes Kh. And the O becomes A. For house, Beito. We say Beita. For God, Alaho. We say Alaha. Same language. In other words, to make it more simple, English, Aussie, American, British, it is all English, but different dialects, different accents. Someone would say, good morning. The other one would say, good morning. There is even the language, there is the separation and the river Euphrates between the Western and the Eastern dialect. So we come back to Euphrates. It is the divider, the separator between the East and the West. And Euphrates is in Iraq. Now when it says that the river Euphrates will dry up because the sixth angel poured that bowl on the great river Euphrates and that river dried up. Drying up meaning Iraq will be striked, which was a 
and it began in 1980. Maybe some of you are not too familiar with the history. It began in 1980, but then again, America tried to overtake Iraq in 1991, and they entered Iraq in 2003. George Bush Sr. tried to take over Baghdad, which is the capital city of Iraq, in the early 90s. He pulled out the last minute. He wasn't very far from the capital city, but he pulled out the last minute. His son, George Bush Jr., came and completed what his dad did not complete a few years before him. So in 2003, they entered Iraq on the basis that Saddam Hussein, who was sentenced by death by hanging um, in the early 2007, um, that they hold weapons of mass destruction and it was the biggest lie of that time absolute fabrication by the george bush administration he knew it and those with him and they lied to the whole world and to everyone iraq never held a weapon of mass destruction and if there was any destructive weaponry in iraq america gave it to them or actually sold it to them in exchange of petrol baby petrol crude oil but you see the issue is it was not to do with weapons of mass destruction it was not to do with crude oil do you know america has reserved crude oil that can feed the entire world they did not go there for that please they are preparing the stage for the finale theatrical act thinking they are smart enough by doing such tactics they will conquer the world and they will remain the superpower of the entire world not realizing through their ignorance of the true divine God who art in heaven, they are fulfilling the plan of the almighty God, even though they are doing it totally away and against him entirely. They are fulfilling his plan to the dot. Iraq was struck by the superpower of the world, America. When Iraq got striked, that is the representation here in Revelation 16, 12, the river Euphrates dried up, meaning striking Iraq was the beginning to World War III. Did I scare you now? That is the beginning of World War III. Has World War III began? Yes. Yes. And striking Iraq would have meant straight thereafter there will never be stability in that region, the Middle East, and in the entire globe. There will never be stability. And so true Ever since Iraq got struck, there has never been a stability, neither in the Middle East, nor anywhere in the world. What happened after Iraq? So many presidents of, of, of Arab world countries were overthrown by their own people, but the Freemasons were behind it. We're trying to control the world. The president of Egypt was overthrown. The president of Libya was dragged in the street and shot dead. The president of Tunisia was forced to step down and, run and flee the country. So many presidents, Syria in recent years, look what they've done to Syria. My goodness. So many innocent people were killed and millions upon millions were forced to flee their own homeland and got scattered 
in Lebanon, in Turkey, and other parts of the world. And until this very day, they are suffering immensely. For what? For power, for control, for supremacy. This is the human being who has no God in their hearts. What did the Lord Jesus say about Satan? He said he is the father of all lies and he is the killer of mankind from the very beginning in the very beginning of humanity in the Garden of Eden. He killed the human race as it all began. He is the father of all lies and the killer of mankind from the very beginning. And when you see people lying to one another, killing one another, realize these are the fruits of Satan, no one else. Satan. Very simple. Straightforward. So the river Euphrates was dried up. Iraq got striked. If I tell you 40,000 children used to die in Iraq every single year out of hunger and starvation. Did the mainstream media say anything about this? Never. 40,000 children Iraqis were dying for the sake of what? Someone lied to the world in order to control. They didn't realize they were setting the stage for World War III. Because World War III will 100% commence in the Middle East and it will engulf the entire globe. But it will start in the Middle East. The beginning to World War III was Iraq being striked, i.e. the river Euphrates drying up. Am I too much? No. Are you sure? So if you're thinking of getting married, do it quickly. <laughs> Just kidding, relax. I'll be your celebrant any time of the day. Very good. When the river Euphrates dried up, what happened? Look at verse 12. So that the way of the kings from the east might pre be prepared. So that the way of the kings from the east. When you go to the Aramaic text, from the east of the sun, S-U-N. It's not mentioned in the New King James Version. The word S-U-N, it's not mentioned. It says here, so that the way of the kings of the what? From the east might be prepared. It should say from the east of the sun, S-U-N. That's in the Aramaic text. One of the oldest manuscripts ever to exist. From the east might be prepared. Now, why is it from the east of the sun? Because if you say the kings to prepare the way for the kings to come from the east, that means those kings are going to come from the east and it could be the Middle East. No, it is the east of the sun. S-U-N. Why? And who are these kings coming? When the Euphrates River dries up, it's going to make the way it will lay the way for the kings from the east of the sun to come. Last time, if you recall, if you remember when we spoke about the sun, S-U-N, we said the sun represents knowledge and glory. Remember? It represents knowledge and glory. And it talks about technology. Technology comes from knowledge. And the more knowledgeable you become, the more glorified you become. They, when they look at someone so educated, everybody praises that person. Look at this professor. Look at this doctor. This person has PhD. This person is a theologian. This person is a professor in whatever field they are. What, what are they receiving from people? Glory. People come, sometimes pay money to listen to their wisdom. So knowledge brings glory. These kings, the way will be prepared for them once the river Euphrates is dried up and they will come from the east of the sun. 
Now who are the kings in the east from the east of the sun? Well, let's go to those who are in the United Nations of the Security Council members. If you're not sure about this, in the Security Council in the United Nations, there are 15 members in that Security Council. Committee, whatever. There are 15 countries. When they want to decide on something, they need a minimum of nine votes out of 15 to call it a decision being reached. However, there are five permanent, permanent members in the Security Council of the UN. These five permanent members, if one, one only says no and uses their veto, no decision can ever be reached. Even if 14 say yes, if one out of the five permanent members ad adhere to their veto, they will override any decision. Who are the five permanent members in the Security Council of the UN? United States, Great Britain, France, China, Russia. United States, Great Britain, France, China, Russia. Out of these five names that I called out, who are the kings from the east of the sun? China, Russia. These are eastern kings. America, Great Britain, western kings. France, swinging. and might end up with Russia and China in the end. Let me tell you this fact. The only country out of the entire Western world, the only country out of the entire Western world that will never betray America is Great Britain. They will never walk away from, great, from America. They will never go against America. The only loyal country that will always be with America is Great Britain. Why? Because Great Britain made America. It's their produce. And we spoke about this in very depth in Revelation 13. Recall... Revelation 13. So the kings of the east will come when the river Euphrates is dried up. Well, out of these five countries who have power from the east, definitely China and Russia. Did you know? Did you know? Both of these countries are, have solid bases in the Middle East right now as we speak. Did you know this? Russia the biggest naval fleet is in Syria. China has already got massive contracts happening with Iraq. They have taken one of the ports, one of the most strategic port that links the trade line with so many countries of the world. China took it in exchange of rebuilding Iraq's infrastructure and they said to Iraqi government you have no jurisdiction to this port as to what we take in and out of that port you have no jurisdiction poor Iraqi people poor Syrian people poor Lebanese people some sick in the head are doing what they're doing and killing civilians, innocent children for their own personal endeavors, evil agendas. To be superpowers in control. In control of what? Your grave? Sick. It's a sick world absolutely sick world I'll stop for a moment is it getting hot 
It has to because it's my presence. Come on, man. A little bit hot? A little bit hot. Maybe we um, turn the um, temperature. Not too cold, Father, please. Just uh, get a breeze, a nice breeze happening. So now, my beloved, these kings will come from the east of the sun because of the dry Euphrates. Iraq was striked. Now, Russia, China are already in the Middle East. That's, I don't know if I should go more into details. The port in Lebanon, which exploded in recent times, that was a deliberate act. What? Uh, oh, there was some stock left there. We don't know. Some ship came from out of nowhere and they offloaded it here. We don't know what happened. It's been sitting there for six years and some reaction happened. Uh, my, uh, hello? Hey, you know, when you want to lie, at least be a man and lie correct, like nicely, <laughs> professionally, yes. Lie professionally. Don't lie acting like a little kid. What product was left there for six years? It was a bomb put there to blow up the port and bring the whole country to its knees. Why? Because if Russia takes over Syria, America must take over Lebanon. And who was the first president that visited Lebanon after the government was gone? Actually, they stole the country's money and they ran away. Who was the first one to visit Lebanon? Oh, the president of France. And he didn't give one, he was so disrespectful to that poor old president of Lebanon. He didn't, he actually, he even told them off in front of the cameras. Company and millions of Americans taxpayers were given to that laboratory in China and the Americans said to them, you modify this virus and release it, whether deliberately or accidentally, but release it either way. Well, if you're going to release it, so whether it's accidental or deliberate, it's deliberate. And with their own words, in actual pr uh, proven official documents, we will use this virus as a weapon of war against humanity. As a weapon of war against humanity, which was being focused on in the 1950s adhered to in 2016 modified and in 2019 end of 19 released accidentally through some bats it was uh, in a market right like honestly a bunch of losers kids you know when someone anyone what well, me anyone when anyone walks away from God, there is no longer wisdom. They will act, adults acting like little kids. What do you call them? Childish behavior. This is the world. Acting so childishly. Absolutely childish behavior. And everyone came out and said, if you do not take this jab, this virus will, could kill you and kill your family. Well, get a life. For a moment, my dear leader, church leader, think heavenly, stop thinking earthly. Because earthly thinking is nothing but mud, dirt, and filth. Think heavenly in order for you to think wisely, clearly, and purely. Heavenly, not earthly. The Lord Jesus showed this piece of wreck. I'm nothing. He showed this piece of wreck in 2018. He said, I will bring the whole world to its knees in 2020. Two years before, the Lord showed me, not in a dream, real. I was sitting at home. He just showed me in front of me what he will do. He said, I will bring this whole world to its knees in 2020. Why did the Lord Jesus allow Satan 
to use all these people to lie and falsify truth and bring all this destruction because number one his beloved church which he purchased with his own precious blood on Calvary on the cross has walked away from her sweetheart the church is living in denial of her Messiah the church in general there are still wonderful leaders. There are still wonderful priests and clergymen in the church. I'm speaking in general. The church in general has created a Christ of her own, a false one that follows the church, not leads the church. Because they chase the world, not God. They chase the world. They sold their conscience everything to Satan and they sold the flock with them but you can't touch the flock who seek Christ it is the blood of the Lamb of God who carries away the sins of the, the world and who protects when you seek him he protects you even if you are in that great fiery inferno if you are in the mouth of the law uh, of the lion he will bring you out of there with that a blemish without a scale, without nothing on you. For Christ is known to save and deliver. So the kings of the from the east of the sun have already walked into Iraq and the Middle East. The stage is being prepared. That's where World War Three has already begun. Verse 13, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth, number one, of the dragon, number two, out of the mouth of the beast, number three, out of the mouth of the false prophet. It is for the first time ever, John the Beloved calls that prophet false prophet. It is in Revelation 16, 13. The first time ever, he uses the words false prophet. In Revelation 13, he just calls it a beast. But here he is called the false prophet. So there was, he saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, coming out of the mouth of the dragon. Who is the dragon? Satan. Out of the mouth of the beast, the system of Satan. Out of the mouth of the false prophet, UN, United Nations. Who created the UN? Who was that false prophet in Revelation 13? That's false prophet who came out of the earth. He was dressed up like a ram. Uh, he was a sheep. He had two horns. We spoke about two horns. A ram. What kind of a dress is that? The sheep. What does it represent? Christianity. For the rightful owner, the one who leads all Christians is Christ. And what did the Holy Bible speak about Christ? John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who carries away the sins of the world. So who is the Lamb? Jesus Christ. Then who are the Christians? The ram, the sheep. We follow in the footprints of our Good Shepherd. So those, that ram, two horns. The two horns represents empires, Great Britain and United States of America. These two founded the United Nations. The leagues of nations then changed into the United Nations, which is in Manhattan, New York. So the false prophet is UN, backed up by the United States, backed up by the Freemasons. Oh, did I just say that? <laughs> okay. I feel sorry for everyone that has lost touch of God. And when I say God, I mean Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to His holy name. I really feel sorry for them. Feel sorry for them. So there was unclean spirits that came like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, Satan, out of the mouth of the beast, the system. What is the mouth uh, uh, of the, um, the, the beast? What is that system of Satan? One world order, new world order. That is the system. Everyone now is talking the same language. Even the religious sector, they want to talk the same language. We're all the same. 
Everybody prays in a different way, but all ends up to one God. As they say, all roads lead to Rome, yeah? Oh, my goodness. My goodness. There is one way to God. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is no other way outside of Jesus that can ever take you to God, the Almighty, the divine, true, living God, creator of everything that is visible and invisible. The only, only, only way to this living God is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, period. And I'm saying it out of love and respect, but no reservation, no hesitation, no hypocrisy. I'll say it as is. This is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God, who is Jesus Christ, God revealed in the flesh over 2,000 years ago, period. Period. You want to believe it? Yours. You don't want to believe it? Sooner or later, everyone will come to this realization. There is only one God. They will face Jesus when the Spirit leaves the body. And He is stunning. You want to see Him beautiful? Or you want to see Him mighty judge? Which way? You want to see Him as Daddy? Or you want to see Him the true divine judge? Up to you. You reject Him, He'll be the judge. You accept Him, He'll be your dad. It's up to you, my beloved. No hard feelings. I will lose sleep over it. And I will not eat fish burger anymore. <laughs> McDonald's, I don't like you. Um, the frog coming out of the mouth of dragon Satan, the beast, the system, one world order, and the mouth of the false prophet United Nations why a frog see this is symbolic language it's not literal so what is why a frog now I'll give you just two things very quickly how oh, many gonna sleep here just two things number one number one the frog lives in swamps places of dirty waters it's a swamp it's an ugly place. They swim there, they love it. It's Hawaii for them. The frogs, they will never stop uh, croaking all night long, not day, night. At night, the frog never stops. All night long, stop it, shut, be quiet, I'm gonna smack you. No, never stops, all night long. And they live in swamps, dirty, ugly places. Satan loves filth, the dragon. Satan wants every human being to live in filth. That's why he will do anything and everything to take you out of the holy house of God, the church, and take you to his filthy place those dark alleys the clubs the pubs the casinos and you name it he will do anything and everything to make everyone to live in filth frog the one world order system the system is to enslave everyone and make them live in sin and what is the system? Technology. Technology. Some people thought the jab was the mark of the beast. Listen, mark of the beast 666 is a system much greater than just a little jab. It's a system that will enslave everyone. You will not be able to move unless you are part of that system. It's a system that controls your life, not a jab in your arm. That jab is just a drop of what the entire system is going to be later on in the near future. That is the system. One world order. And when this system comes, there will be one 
ruling over the system that person ruling over this governmental system is called the Antichrist the Antichrist is not a person that is going to come and do miracles and wonders and signs as some people think no it is the system but this system needs to be run by someone but the system is the Antichrist whoever sits on that system is the Antichrist part of that system ruling that system and then the false prophet the United Nations <sighs> what are the so-called elites trying to do to humanity the so-called elites I was thinking about the name the word elites I think it's uh, it's way way too much I'll call them fleets Elites, what are they trying to do? You want to brainwash anyone, any human being, regardless what your religious background, whatever you are, your color, your race. How do you brainwash any human being and every human being? Two things you need to brainwash. See, the elites are, are driven by Satan because they worship Satan. Their God is Satan. They are controlled by Satan. That's why there is all this child trafficking and child sacrificing. Sick in the head. Technology. Who introduced pornography? Satan through the elites. Who introduced Hollywood? Satan through the elites. You want to brainwash people? You need two things. One mainstream media to money because to run the mainstream media you need money and to brainwash people you need mainstream media mainstream medias will never ever tell you any truth they will always lie to you because they are run by the elites and their job is to brainwash people to make them come to this level where they begin to live uh, to to believe in a lie being the truth and this is where um, that Prime Minister of Great Britain in, during World War II Winston Churchill I'm getting old please forgive me Winston Churchill while he was the Prime Minister of Great Britain during World War II he said I thought the most powerful weapon was the atomic bomb I've come to this realization the most powerful weapon in the world is the truth and this is why it is quite often being surrounded by a bodyguard of lies the most powerful weapon in the world is the truth this is why it is quite often being surrounded by a bodyguard of lies mainstream media's role unique role is to bombard the whole human race with lies 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 every single day in and out after one two three four five years you will believe the lie being the truth you will never accept the truth ever again and who is the truth God revealed in the flesh Jesus Christ of Nazareth this is why so many young people men and women are walking away from God and becoming godless because their brain has been bombarded with lies for a very long time and the stamp sealed finale of those lies is the university levels by the so-called professors the atheists to the core the sons of the snake coming from the elites deliberately planted in that educational system and more so university because when you come to an 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 year old men and women this is the crucial moment where you grab him once and for all open your eyes and see it is extremely clear so next time my beloved son and daughter you're sitting in that class, whatever place it is in that university, and the tutor comes and says there is no God. 
Say, I'll call my bishop to come and give you the third degree burns. I'd like to see one of these tutors. Very ignorant. There is no God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's a joke. Everything is happening in our time and age by the world, in the world, is nothing but a silly joke. To brainwash people, you need media and you need money. Every mainstream media outlet is controlled by the elites. Entertainment has done a huge damage to our beloved sons and daughters in the millions. And look what they do to the Hollywood celebrities. They destroy them. Michael Jackson began a choir boy in the church praising the Lord. They destroyed Michael Jackson. Maybe he didn't want to be like that, but they destroyed him because they manipulated him until they wiped him from existence. The elites. You go against them, <laughs> they'll drive you crazy. What did they do to Mel Gibson when he wanted to bring out the, the passion of the Christ? Oh, they gave him hell. He was almost gone. He was almost gone. And how now he lives in isolation because it is him and Jim Caviezel who are speaking the truth. The sound of freedom. Go and watch that movie. Absolutely true. Everything in it is absolutely true. Yes, they do slain those innocent children and mince them. And the hundreds of thousands every year, little innocent children disappear. Look, I'm really sorry. Maybe we have some children here, but I, I got really... When it comes to two things, I, I, can't, I can't manage. I just break my heart, just get so broken, I can't handle it. Two things, children and elderly. When I see an old man crying, it breaks me to pieces. When I see a little kid crying, it breaks me to pieces. Because these two, they can't do it on their own. They need help. They can't do it on their own. They need help. Shame on everyone that calls themselves a human being to go and steal those kids, kidnap them and kill them. Shame on you. I cannot call you a human being anymore. An animal would have shown mercy more than you. An animal. A vicious animal wouldn't have done what you're doing. So shame on you. All this amazing so-called people, yet the end of everyone is the grave. Amazing. All this for what? For the grave? Is it getting hot? No. Or is it me? No. Not hot. Okay, maybe I'm hot. All right, let's, let's finish it off because it really gets me when it... Um, I, I, but at the same time, don't be shocked to see people uh, achieving such evilness the moment that human being loses track totally of God don't be shocked every evil will come out of that person because Satan you have no idea what kind of an evil spirit he is no idea by the way any and every foul language the teacher is Satan who taught people to swear Satan I can show you it came from him not because I'm, I'm saying it lightly no because I've seen him and I know how he swears yes every foul language that comes out of your mouth remember Satan is behind it what are you doing stop 
come back ask the Lord for forgiveness say Lord I'm sorry for using this foul word for using this foul statement for using this foul language I'm sorry Lord I'm coming back repenting asking you to heal me and revive me teach me how to talk Lord teach me your language the language of love the language of love For they are spirit, verse 14, for they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. These spirits are demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth. Oh yes, performing signs. Has technology performed signs? Yes. Is it going to perform more signs? Yes. Congratulations, AI is coming. Congratulations, AI is just coming around the corner. And watch what AI is going to do. Some lost souls are being boastful about their achievements. Look, us humans, what we are capable of doing. Look at the technology. What technology? This is stupidity in its core. virtual reality so you'll marry someone in a virtual reality you'll visit someone in a virtual reality you'll smack someone you'll kiss someone in a virtual reality you'll become a virtual reality you are no longer a real human being you're just a fantasy in a fantasized world total brainwashing and God knows what else be hidden is behind this agenda Every technology that brings evil, Satan is behind it. TV, when it started in 1947, it was two Christian channels, black and white, so simple, so humble. The, the women presenters, especially when they came out on that screen, they were dressed up worse than me. They were totally covered, like Bishop Murray. Long skirt. And all the way to the neck. Nowadays they come out totally uncovered. Uncovered. Evil. Evil, my beloveds. To gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Which is that great day? That great day is when Christ rules and reigns over everyone. This is the great day of God. When Jesus Christ reigns over every single human being. That is the great day. Let's finish it off. Verse 15. It's amazing. Verse 15, by the way, has got nothing to do with these verses. It just came out out of nowhere and God just put it in there got nothing to do with these verses 12 13 14 and 16 are together 15 nothing to do with the entire concept you see because let me read verse 14 and 16 and see how it links together for they are spirits of demon performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. 16. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. Don't they go together? Because 14 says to gather them to that great day of God Almighty. And verse 16. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. But look at 15. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. What has this got to do with all these verses? Absolutely nothing. Only one thing. God never make mistakes. Deliberately was put there to give you comfort and hope. Why? Because when you read the entire chapter 16, it's all about this guy killing this, and this ball was thrown on the land, and this ball was thrown on the sea, and it became blood, and on there this, and everything dried up. It is all negative, 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 negative. You start losing hope. You start be panicking. You start saying, well, 
There is nothing left. Might as well just go home and call it a day. Lock the door. Never go out. I don't care about work. I don't care about going, coming, learning, studying. What's the point? Everything is ending. The Lord says, no, I'm going to put a statement of hope, a, a promise of hope in the midst of that dark world that you live in. The light of Christ will shine upon you if you hold on to him. Don't ever lose hope. Why don't ever lose hope? Why is this statement of hope put in the midst of all trouble? Because all these punishments, all these strikes, who is controlling them? The Lord. The Lord ordered the angels to pour the bowls on here and on here. The Lord controls the kings of the earth. The Lord is in charge of everything that has been happening till this very moment that is happening. The Lord is in control. And the Lord to you and me is the one who died for us, who purchased us with his precious blood, who was buried for our sake and who rose from the dead and ascended and sat at the right hand of the Father all glory to his holy name he loves you more than himself it is he who is in control of every one and everything not just the church the whole world not just the whole world heaven and hell and the earth it is under the control of Christ do not be afraid they're doing things according to my plan who put George Bush? The Lord Jesus. Who put Saddam Hussein? The Lord Jesus. Who put the kings of the earth wherever they are? The Lord Jesus. Who allowed America to go into Iraq? The Lord Jesus. Why? Because his wisdom is infinite. No one will ever understand how God operates. But one thing, when God allows for certain things to come, it is a warning based on love to awaken us up and say my children the church you have walked away from me when lockdown came were you able to go to ladies nights any longer you fought with your husband and said if you don't babysit your bag will be in the street I'm going to ladies nights whether you like it or not we fought over materialistic things we fought over rings we fought over cars we fought over dresses we fought over houses we fought over properties we fought over materialistic things we never fought for the Lord we fought for everything except the Lord what do you think the Lord is gonna do he loves you he sees you going to perdition. You're going to hell. What is he going to do out of love? A con the concerned heavenly father. Out of love and concern he'll come. And he will shake the ground beneath you to get your attention. Because he's been calling you nicely for a long, long, long time. And you kept ignoring his calling. You left him no choice but to come and break you in order to make you. That's what happened in 2020. He's in control. No one can shut the door of the church unless the Lord gives that permission. Please believe in that. No one can touch you unless the Lord gives that permission. Please believe in that. So he's given you hope. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Verse 15, split it in two. The first part, for those who, re, who denied the Lord. The second part, for those who accept the Lord. Those who deny the Lord, behold, I'm coming as a thief. I'll take you back all the way to Calvary, to the cross. Where was the Lord Jesus crucified? Between who? Two thieves, wasn't it? So what did the Jewish people say to Jesus Christ? How did they treat the Lord as a thief? They said, we're going to crucify you in the midst of two thieves because to us, Jesus, you are a thief. The Lord said, okay, what you seek, you will find. You, you looked at me and you approached me as a thief and you took me as a thief, then I will come to you as a thief. What you chose, what you asked for, you will, you will get, my dear child. 
So you, you counted me as a thief, I'll come to you as a thief. The thief comes at night, the, thieves come, the thief comes at a time you never anticipated. Have you ever seen a thief coming with a piece of paper and a writing on it and placing it in your mailbox and saying, my dear householder, please be warned, I will be visiting you to steal uh, your house at 3 p.m. tomorrow. He's not going to do that. He'll come at a time never thought of, never anticipated. And mainly they do it at night time because it is dark. Nobody sees. But to those who accept the Lord, he is the sun, S-U-N, the light of the world. He's not going to come as a thief. He'll come and tell you before anything takes place. You're his child. So to those who accept him, he will come to what? Blessed is he who watches, awake, alert, and keeps his garments. Garments mean your baptism, your baptismal dress. Galatians 3.27 You who have been baptized into Christ, put on the Christ. This is the garment that will keep you awake, that will keep you alert in the midst of the darkness of this world. Christ, the light of the world, will shine in you and around you. And he will come and say, do not be troubled, I am here. This is what's going to happen and this is what I've already done for you, my child. Fear nothing, fear no one. Fear nothing, fear no one. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments. Your baptismal garments, keep it clean. Do not stain it by the filth of the world. You are the child of God, born of the baptismal font. You belong to God. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, made you the Son of God. He adopted you to be the child of God through the holy baptism, one of the seven sacraments of the true church. Baptism is a sacrament, not symbolic. It's a true birth. For God's sake, read the Bible as is. Read the Holy Bible as is. Keep that garment clean. Don't defile that garment by becoming a worldly person, yet Christ brought you out of the world for him. Don't go back to the world. Keep that garment clean. Blessed are those who watches and keeps his, his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Don't reject what God has given you. Don't ignore what God has given you. Don't disrespect what God has given you because it took a very precious price, a very expensive price to give you that garment. It took the blood of the Lamb of God to be shed on the cross on Calvary to dress you up in that garment. Don't ever stain it. My son, my daughter, where are you going? Who are you going with? Who just called you and said, let's go? What did they say? What are they teaching you? What are they showing you? Where are they taking you? Who are you mixing with? Where are you staying this very moment? You don't belong in that street out there. Satan is there. Come to your father's house. The church, be with the Lord Jesus. You are that child of God. You are that child of God. And they gathered them together to the place called, in Hebrew, Armageddon. Very quickly. Some people say the final battle will take place in that valley of Armageddon. And whatever they say, it's literal, it's not. Let me tell you this. Armageddon, my beloved, again, symbolically speaking, it, it, there, I mean, World War III is not just going to be... Um, rifles and fighting in the streets. They'll be pressing buttons and rockets across the continents. I can show you that. But there will be, however, there will be a, an, a fearsome battle in the Middle East. Israel will be striked by those kings that came from the east of the sun because the river Euphrates got dried up. Iraq got striked. Those eastern kings are Russia and China. More than 
clear. It is China that will strike Israel, which will be the beginning of the nuclear war. When Israel gets striked, that is nuclear war. China and Russia. Because in, in Revelation chapter 9, we saw the army being 200,000 thousand. So when you put thousand thousand and two hundred, that is two hundred million soldiers. Only China can produce such an army. Only China. No other superpower nation can come up with two hundred million soldiers fully equipped. China can. Imagine two hundred million soldiers marching through the Middle East. The bloodbath will surpass your height. The Middle East will be engulfed, will be striked, and blood will be shed in the Middle East in the near future. Humanity till this moment hasn't seen yet. All this for denying the true God. People killed each other because they were blinded by the enemy. So sad. Why is it so hard to love one another? Why? Why do you want to hurt people? Why don't you be nice? Why don't you be kind? You see, all these aspects, all these attributes, only God can give you. You walk away from God, where are you going to get it from? He is your source of goodness and richness. Where are you going to get love from? Definitely not Satan. Where are you going to get patience from? Where are you going to get sacrifice from? Where are you going to get kindness from? Where are you going to get meekness from? Where are you going to get forgiveness from? Where? Only God can give you these. You walk away from God, you've lost everything good. You are left with nothing but evil. But evil, my child. Armageddon. Um, the, the word Armageddon means the mountain of our glory. Har in Hebrew means mountain. Gedon or Gideon means our glory. Armageddon, it is not a it is H in the original language. Harmageddon. Har means mountain. Armageddon means the mountain of our glory. There was one mountain which was God's glory. They replaced that mountain with their glory. And when they seeked their own glory, what did they end up doing? Slaining one another. And they called it glory. What a glory. So stupid. When you read in the book of Judges, very quickly, there was a judge in the Israelite nation's history called Deborah, a woman. Whoa, go woman. Because a time came there was no more kings ruling over Israel. God gave him a period of judges. One of the judges, influential judges, was a woman called Deborah. And the word Deborah in Hebrew, Aramaic, Syriac means the bee. You know, the one that makes honey, honey the bee so she was in her wisdom she was like a bee stinging but she was productive woman very smart so Deborah went to this man called Barak and she said grab 10,000 men soldiers of yours and go and slain uh, uh, Sisera or Sisera who was an enemy where did they fight where did Deborah overcome the enemy at Mount Tabor. What happened at Mount Tabor? The Lord Jesus in the New Testament takes Simon Peter, the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, takes them with him on the mount top of Tabor and he transfigures. It is the mount of God's glory. But at the end, that mountain has been replaced by our glory, not God's. Because those people that are going to end up in Armageddon, they are the people who have totally denied the true divine God. 
And what will happen when they totally deny God? That mountain will be their glory, not God's. That mountain will be a bloodbath. People killing one another for being absolutely blind and ignorant. But if you follow God, where will he take you? Tabor, the Mount of Transfiguration, where Simon Peter, James and John, sons of Zebedee, saw the glory, not theirs, but of God's. At the end, people would have replaced God's glory with their own glories. False glories. False glories led them to total destruction, Armageddon. It's 722. Have I kept you for too long? Are you upset? Are you happy? Do you love me? Yes. I love you more. But Jesus loves you the most. Um, God willing, we'll continue at chapter 16 uh, next week, and um, it'll be the uh, end of chapter 16 by next week coming, by the grace of our Lord Jesus. Um, I just want to say one last thing very quickly. To everyone, and more so to the younger generation, my sons and daughters, my brothers and sisters, to everyone. Before you go and do something, or say something, or think of something, pray and seek God's will in your life. Say, Lord, here am I. What do you want of me to do for you? Change your way of thinking. Stop saying me, me, me. Say, Lord, it is you from now on, no longer me. I've tried it so many years, so many times, for so long, my way. Where did I end up? What have I achieved? Absolute lostness, absolute despair, absolute emptiness and destruction. What have I done? I did it my way. I ended up a drug addict. I did it my way. I ended up a thief. I did it my way, I ended up dead in the grave. I did it my way, I ended up behind bars in a prison. I did it my way, I destroyed myself. Think, my child. Stop listening to people. Once in your life, for a change, listen to God. Once in your life. If you haven't been on your knees, do it tonight. Go home. And in your room, shut the door. Have that private moment with your God, with your Creator, with your Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to His holy name. Go on your knees and say, Lord, I don't know how to pray, but you are the God of hearts, not the God of lip service. Maybe I don't know how to pray in a structured way, but I know how to speak in a human way. Tonight, I'm going on my knees speaking to you from this heart, hoping that it will reach your sacred heart. Lord, I confess I'm a sinner. And it's my fault, no one else's. Before I blamed everyone, but tonight I'm blaming no one but me. Before I denied that I did it, but tonight I'm saying, I did it. I'm not denying it anymore. I confess, Lord, and I'm begging you for mercy. I'm begging you for mercy, Lord. Have mercy on me. Forgive me. And Lord, I'm giving up. You know, when you pray, you raise your hands to heaven. Do you know what this gesture means? You're surrendering. Because when you are a soldier in, in an army and you engage in this battle and that army loses that battle, when they capture those soldiers as prisoners of war, the first thing those soldiers do, they raise their arms, their hands and say, I surrender, please don't shoot. 
What is this saying? I tried it my way. I got engaged in this battle because I thought I was going to win this battle, but I came to this gruesome reality. I was nothing but a miserable failure. I failed. I lost the battle. I surrender. Take me as your prisoner, Lord. Because I thought I could manage without you. I thought I could find my freedom without you. I thought I could find my happiness without you. I thought I could make it without you. But I realized I failed, Lord. Tonight I'm coming saying, sorry, Lord. I was blind, ignorant, foolish, weak, piece of dust. Surrender all of me, hoping to gain all of you. Do that every day. Every day. You want to go out, say, Lord, I love you, Daddy. Let's go together. Protect me on the way out. You coming back, say, Lord, I love you. Let's go together. Protect me on the way back home. You go to sleep, say, Lord, I love you. Be with me in my sleep. Protect me in my sleep. Deliver me from the snares of the enemy and those evil, evil dreams and nightmares. When you wake up, Lord, I love you. Thank you for this morning. You are my sunshine. You are the sun of righteousness and healing in its wings. You wash your face. Say, Lord, wash me clean. You dress up. Say, Lord, dress up my nakedness and cover it. You eat, say, Lord, you be my enrichment and nourishment. You drink, say, Lord, you are the quencher of my thirst. You are the living waters. Remember him in everything you do. And thank the Lord for whatever has happened, good and bad, thank him. Because you know why? Lord, even though I failed you, but I'm still standing. Thank you, Lord. It was you. When I sold you with 30 pieces of silver, you purchased me with your blood. The ultimate price. When I denied you, you embraced me on the cross. When I walked away, you ran after me, begging me for that comeback. You never let go. Because you are the only one who is faithful to his promise and loyal to his heavenly father. I thank you, Lord. Men enjoy life. They strike Iraq. They went to the Middle East. They want to have a barbecue, sausage sizzle. I'll barbecue them all by one phone call to my sweetheart, Jesus. I can bring China, Russia, America to its knees. I just call my sweetheart. I say, Lord, teach him a lesson. Teach a lesson to those so-called elite fleets. Teach him a lesson. The Lord is capable. But beyond all this, say, Lord, who cares? You're with me and I'm with you. That's what all that matters. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, Lord. Who cares about I'm walking in hell or I'm walking in heaven? Who gives one penny about the place? What matters is the owner of the place, not the place. I don't want heaven. I don't want hell. I want you. I don't care that I'm happy going to heaven. I'm, I'm happy because I'm coming to see you, Dad, and be with you. I'm your baby in a nappy. Don't leave home without your baby because the baby will say, Mah. Love the Lord like a child loves his parent. When you come to Christ, remember my beloved children, come to Christ as a little baby. But when you take Christ to the world, face the world as an adult mature person, not a baby. Be wise when you face the world. Be innocent when you face the Messiah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Amen. We thank the Lord. All right, my beloved Nora, I've kept you for too long and I've done very well. Let's hear this angelic voice once again and is being accompanied, I believe, by Eddie.